Welcome back everyone to another one of my RPG talk videos. Um, trying to think of a better title, so bear with me. But similar to RPG A Day or any of those other exercises, they are just quick bite-sized videos where I pick a topic or ask a question, rant about it for a little bit, and then pass it off to you, the denizens of the internet, to hear what you have to say. Because I want to hear your comments, I want to hear your answers to the questions, and I want to hear the stories uh, of your experiences and how your sessions handled things and stuff like that. It's to promote positivity about the hobby and to meet and greet new people and to hear their experiences. So today's topic is what is uh, an epiphany that you had? What is a learning moment that kind of changed the way that you approach the game? Um, whatever your game of choice, what's something that happened that really reconstructed the way that you build characters or game master or or whatever it may be what's something where you kind of took a step back adjusted yourself and then evolved moving forward uh, for mine i have one as a player and one as a gm and as a player it is when i realized that healing in rpgs D, &D specifically does not necessarily work the same way as video games um, played several MMOs, a lot of video games, and I kind of default to that healing support role. And when I started messing with D&D during 3.0 and 3.5, I kind of approached it the same way. And then my early messings with 5th edition, same thing. I, I wanted to play a healer or a support character, and I had to realize that unlike a video game where you stand in the back, wait on people to get hurt, and then heal them, in RPGs, you approach it a little bit different. Oftentimes, you don't want to stand in the back, you know, keeping a reserve of all your resources until your friends are hurt. You want to use your resources to keep your friends from being hurt in the first place. And there's lots of different ways you can do that. You can buff your allies, increase, you know, temporary hit points, raise their armor class, give them better saves or abilities, or you can debuff your enemies, give them negatives to their attacks, or um, put status effects on them that immobilize them, put them to sleep, um, and finally, just outright dealing damage. If you deal enough damage to something and kill it, it is no longer in the combat and is no longer dealing damage to your friends. If you are fighting a giant that is doing 15 or 20 damage every round and it is almost dead, is it better for you to heal your friends for a d8 plus wisdom or to kill the giant and stop it from killing your friends right so that was something i kind of had to learn and i kind of had to adjust how i build my support characters in that i don't always get a big pile of healing spells i get a couple of healing spells that i can use when i need to heal but then i focus more on buffs debuffs and things that i can do to control the battlefield um, and this is seen in my Princes of the Apocalypse character. My healer was actually a cleric wizard multiclass, just a single level of cleric to be able to pick up a couple of healing spells. And then, you know, a 10 to 11 levels of wizard. I think we ended up being level 12. So 11 levels of wizard. And all of my wizard spells were battlefield control, status effect type spells so that I could haste my allies because hasting the fighter or the monk and giving them multiple attacks meant almost double damage going out and the more damage going out means the less enemies there are alive to be attacking my friends or things like sleep and command so that i could command four or five things you know grovel and now four or five enemies on the battlefield have the chance of groveling being prone not only not attacking but now my allies who are attacking them the, the monk and the fighter specifically have advantage on their attacks so not only was there no damage dealt by those enemies that spent their turns groveling all of my friends had a better chance to hit them which is doubly effective compared to oh let me cast a you know a third level uh, cure wounds and do a couple of d8 plus three healing right so that's my answer from a player side. My answer from the GM side or the DM side is adjusting my answers so that instead of just saying yes and no, changing that to be yes, but, and no, but, right? Word it however you want, but give them their answer, but then reasons why on that answer, right? Give them something else to work with. The player comes along and he says, you know, hey, we know that this person we're, we're investigating is staying in the inn, so I want to break into their room and 
you know, snoop around for clues. Can I climb up and break into their window? Right? Well, don't just say no. Say yes, however, it's broad daylight out. There's people around, they're going to see you doing that. Or there's guards nearby or patrolling, they might catch you, right? Because you're not shutting down the player's idea. You are telling them, yes, you are able to do that. However, here, th here are things that you need to consider, right? So now the player goes, oh, well, it's broad daylight out. Okay, well, I can wait till nighttime and then try to break into their room. Or, oh, there's guards patrolling. Maybe I can talk my friends into, you know, distracting the guards before they come around the corner. And that'll give me 10, 15 minutes to climb up and be in the window. And then I can be in the room doing what I need to do while the guard patrol passes. And then I can climb down, right? So it's, it's ways to answer the person's question and tell them, yes, here's the situation but it doesn't shut them down. Can I do something? No. Okay, well that, that stops it there. Some players might be better about, okay, well how about, and, and kind of hashing it out with you, but some folks are prideful in that they had that idea, and when you say, no, that idea is not possible, they retreat back and they, you know, they go, okay, well I'm out of ideas, does anyone else want to do anything? If you give them that little piece like, well, no, you can't do that, but you can do X, Y, and Z. Or, yeah, you can do that, but here are some things that you need to consider that really equips the player to think more about their situation and their actions in that situation and allows them to better approach that situation. It also has the benefit of you didn't necessarily describe things, but now that they've asked this question, you can say, well, yeah, but, and here are all these other things that let you better describe the scene because you can say, yeah, you can do that, but there are guard patrols. Because when you describe the inn, you didn't say, well, there's a guard patrol every 10 minutes because it wasn't necessarily relevant at the time. You can say, yes, but you've noticed that every couple of minutes, two guards walk by, so you need to kind of keep that in mind. Or, yes, but there's people out front, you would need to distract them, right? Well, the people out front wasn't the wasn't in your initial description of you found the inn where the person is staying but now you can provide them this new information they can adjust that or take that and adjust their plan and uh, you know act accordingly so that's my two answers for the question of what's a a learning moment or an epiphany or or however you want to word it uh, as a player realizing that healing doesn't really work the same way as video games and adjusting my strategies thusly to better buff my friends and debuff my enemies as well as removing combatants from the turn order to reduce not the amount of damage happening but stop damage from happening in the first place and as a gm realizing that i can word my yes and no's better to keep players more engaged and to get them thinking more about the situation their surroundings and other ways that they might reach the objectives that they have um, I want to thank everyone for watching this. I look forward to any answers, comments, and stories that you have. So uh, leave comments down below. You can hit me up on Twitter in response to this or, you know, make your own videos and link them or uh, respond to me on Twitter with a link to your video. I love to check it out. So I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by and I look forward to doing more of these videos.